Coming off the 2008 and 2009 seasons, Usain Bolt led the resurgence of Jamaica as the dominant force in global 100 meter sprinting. And though Bolt was at the forefront, he was joined by Asafa Powell and Michael Frater, two already well established sprinters, to bring in a new generation of Jamaican talent onto the world stage. Newer athletes like Nesta Carter, Johan Blake, Steve Mullings, and a host of other names were proving that Jamaica's depth could not only match, but arguably surpass that of the United States, which had been the dominant force in men's 100 meter dash for decades. But a few sequence of events throughout one specific season put Jamaica's dominance on display and showed the world the sheer depth of 100 meter sprinters the country had built up over just the past few years. So let's talk about how Jamaica solidified its dominance of the men's 100 meter dash in the 2011 outdoor season. After winning the sprint double at the 2008 Beijing Olympics and 2009 Berlin World Championships, Usain Bolt quickly became the greatest sprinter in history and was putting Jamaica back on the map as a sprint powerhouse. His 2010 season, though was not only cut short due to injury, but also included him suffering his first loss since winning his gold medals, finishing behind Tyson Gay in the 100 meters at the Stockholm Diamond League. In the midst of Bolt's 2010 injury, his training partner Johan Blake was beginning to build up his presence on the international stage and becoming a major factor in the 100 meters. Blake ended the 2010 season running a personal best of 9.89 seconds as well as other times of 9.96, 9.95, and 9.91. Along with him, Nesta Carter in 2010 became the fourth fastest man in history running 9.78 seconds. We can also never forget about Asafa Powell, the four-time world record holder before Bolt came on the scene. In 2010, Powell ran 9.8 seconds on multiple occasions and had two windy times of 9.72 and 9.75 seconds. There was also Michael Frater, silver medalist at the 2005 World Championships in Helsinki, Finland, and had a personal best of 9.97 seconds. He had run 9.98 during the 2010 season. Finally, there was Steve Mullings, who had only a personal best of 10.01, but had made the 200 meter final at the Berlin World Championships, and had also run on the 2007 and 2009 Jamaican 4x1s that won silver and gold respectively. So, entering the 2011 season, Jamaica had a strong contingent of six athletes, Usain Bolt, Asafa Powell, Nesta Carter, Johan Blake, Michael Frater, and Steve Mullings, all with the potential to medal and giving them a real chance to sweep the medals at the upcoming world championships in Daegu, South Korea. On the world stage, though there was some strong competition for Jamaica, there was no solid threat to break up their potential podium sweep. 2004 Olympic and 2005 world champion Justin Gatlin was returning to the world championships after a four-year ban, which kept him away from the sport, so he was nowhere near the Gatlin we know of today. Tyson Gay, who had dominated in 2010, ranking number one in the world, was unfortunately injured and would not compete at the world championships. Walter Dix, who had won bronze in the 100 and 200 meters at the 2008 Beijing Olympics and had a personal best of 9.88 seconds in 2010, was the top American entering the 2011 world championships. So prior to those trials though, we saw the top Jamaicans prepare to make the world championship team. In late May, Asafa Powell ran 9.93 seconds, winning the 100 meters at the Rome Diamond League. Johan Blake had run a best of 9.95 seconds at a meet in France early in June. At the Prefontaine Classic in the United States, we had Steve Mullings, Nesta Carter, and Michael Frater all lined up for the 100 meter dash. Mullings would go on to win the race in a huge personal best of 9.80 seconds. That made him the sixth fastest man in history and shot him to the top as a serious medal threat. Also in the race, Nesta Carter ran 9.92 and Michael Frater ran a personal best of 9.94. So, all of them were informed, healthy, and ready to go. Well, enter the 2011 Jamaican National Championships. You had all five of them lined up and ready to fight for just three spots on the team to join Usain Bolt in Daegu, South Korea. At the start, Nesta Carter and Johan Blake were out fast, with Mullings and Powell just behind. 50 meters into the race though, Asafa Powell began to pull up even with them, and Mullings also got back into the mix. As they approached the line, Powell had a slight lead and casually turned to his left, looking across the field to check if he was safe, which he was. Powell would come out with the win, running 10.08 seconds. Blake was in second, running 10.09, while Mullings was third in 10.10 .10 seconds. 
all three barely separated by two hundredths of a second. Just behind them, Nesta Carter was fourth in 10.12, while Michael Frater was fifth in 10.19 seconds. A thrilling race that lived up to the hype and showed just how close on the margins all of these guys were to each other. So, along with defending champ Usain Bolt, Powell, Blake, and Mullings were on their way to the World Championships in Daegu later that year. And this squad had a very good chance of sweeping the 100 meter dash medals at those championships. But despite an exciting national trials race, this is where the dominoes began to fall for Jamaica. Just over two weeks before the start of the World Championships, Steve Mullings tested positive for a banned substance. Not only did this take him out of competing at the World Champs, he eventually was banned from the sport for life as he had a previous positive test from back in 2004. So with his absence, that moved up Nesta Carter and brought him onto the Jamaican team. Now on August 25th, just two days before the start of the 100 meter heats in Daegu, Asafa Powell, who was the world leader at that point, ended up pulling out due to a groin injury that came up as he prepared for the world championships. So, with another domino fallen, Jamaican now brought in Michael Freighter, fifth placer at the national trials, to fill in the spot for Powell. So with that, here we are, finally in Daegu, with four Jamaicans lined up in the 100 meters. Usain Bolt, Johan Blake, Nesta Carter, Michael Freighter. All four of them made it comfortably through the first round heats, moving them on to the semifinal round. In those semis, Blake and Bolt won their heats, with Blake notably running a season's best of 9.95 seconds. Nesta Carter finished second in his heat, getting an auto qualifier into the final as well. Behind though, Michael Freighter unfortunately finished in sixth place, far outside the threshold to qualify for the final. So, Jamaica was now down to three athletes all in that final, still with a good possibility to sweep the medals. Now, one important thing to know is just a year prior, the IAAF changed the false start rules to be one false start and you're out, one and done. Well, lo and behold, at the first major championships this rule was in place, the gold medal favorite, reigning world champion, and world record holder Usain Bolt reacts too early to the gun, jumping out of the blocks, and gets hit with a false start, eliminating him from the race. That left just two Jamaicans, Johan Blake and Nesta Carter in the final for Jamaica. Nesta Carter, though, had apparently picked up an injury or a cramp after the semifinals, which were just two hours earlier, hindering his ability to run properly in the final. So, from the gun, the field was safely out of the blocks, but Nesta Carter was almost immediately out of the race due to his injury. Kim Collins of St. Kitts and Nevis was out the quickest and led the field for most of the first half of the race. Johan Blake and Walter Dix were a few steps behind, running even through about 40 meters. But then halfway down the track, Johan Blake completely separated from the rest of the field, running away and made everyone look as if they were walking on the track. Blake would run away with the win, earning the gold medal in a season's best of 9.92 seconds and his third fastest time ever. This was a huge performance and solidified Johan Blake as one of the greater sprinters at the time. He would of course go on to run 9.69 and win the silver medal at the 2012 Olympic Games. But what's more impressive is how the sequence of events leading up to this win solidified the depth of sprinters that Jamaica had built up over the past few years. After starting off with six viable metal threats, the team dwindled down one by one. Steve Mullings was lost to a drug ban, Asafa Powell pulled out due to injury, Michael Freighter couldn't make it out of the semifinals, Usain Bolt disqualified for a false start, and Nesta Carter injured and unable to run at his best in the final. All that was left was Johan Blake, and regardless of all of those dominoes falling and the cards stacked against them, Jamaica was still able to come out on top as the 2011 world champions in the 100 meters. This would ensure that Jamaica maintained its hold on the 100 meter gold as, with Bolt, they would win every gold medal from 2008 until 2017 when Gatlin and Coleman were able to take down Bolt right before his retirement. So. That's the impeccable 2011 season by Jamaica in the men's 100 meter dash. Go in the comments below and let me know what you think of Jamaica's 2011 season and their dominance through the decade as well. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.